Hi, we're going to be looking at polynomial division. And first of all, just kind of bringing you back. Remember when you were in grade school and you learned how to do long division? Most students at the elementary age just think at first that this is just horrible because the problems are so long. But I'm going to revisit this because it's those concepts that we actually end up using in polynomial long division. Now, first of all, just the words partly so that we can talk about them, but also so that you understand instructions. The part that you are dividing by is your divisor. What you're dividing it into is the dividend. And the answer is the quotient. And if you have a leftover part, we call that the remainder. And we could write that plus the remainder over the divisor like a fraction. The polynomial that you very first start with then can be rewritten as the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So without us yet getting into polynomials, let's just quite simply say then, if I were gonna do 12 divided by five, that would go in there two times and then my remainder would be two. If I'm looking at this bottom down here, that means that I can take my 12 that I started with is equal to my divisor times my quotient that's from the top plus my remainder. And five times two is 10 and 10 plus two is, is 12. So that does work, but you're gonna have some problems that ask you to write P of X in this format and I just don't want that format to throw you off in terms of what it's asking for. So what you started with is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Okay so again just flashing back to that grade school and hopefully what wasn't terrible terrible memories what we're going to do is work this problem out then. 33,115 divided by 27. Now, one of the things you learn in grade school is to use front ends. We actually don't want to consider the entire 33,115. We just want to look at the first part that we can put 27 into. So we just focused on this 33 here and said 27 will go into 33 one time. So that's what I did. I wrote it above. Once you've looked at the front ends, then you write how many times it will go in there above it for your quotient part. Then when you multiply, you multiply the, to the entire divisor, not just part of it. So we wouldn't just do one times seven or one times two. It's one times 27. Then in, in grade school, they tell you to subtract. I'm gonna change that wording a little bit because we have a lot more positives and negatives in algebra. So definitely, though, we're going to draw a line and then we will change the sign. And so right now, this is a positive, so it will become a subtract when I draw the line, change the sign. But if in algebra I had a negative, I would go ahead and change that into a positive. Then bring down. We want to actually do the combination here of 33 minus 27. And 33 minus 27 is 6. So that's my bring down. But I also am going to bring down my next numbers, the ones I haven't used yet. And some people may have learned to do that in grade school, but some people didn't. They just looked at the very next number. But for algebra, we will bring all of the rest of it down. Then we either repeat this process or what we have is the remainder. But of course, 6,115 is larger than 27, so we need to repeat the process. So again, we're just gonna look at front ends. So 27 will go into 61 two times. And that, when I multiply, is 54. Draw the line, change the sign. Then I want to bring down, so I bring down that 7 from the subtraction, but then I'm also going to bring down the 1, 5. And again, you either repeat or you have a remainder. This is going to be a repeat. 27 will go in there two times would be 54. If I tried three times, though, it would be too big. So it's still just going to go in there two times. 54, draw the line, change the sign. 175 when I bring down. And 175 
divided by 27. It'll go in there six times, not exactly. Six times 27 is 162. Draw the line and change the sign. So once that 75 minus 62 is 13. And 13 is my remainder. So again, if I was going to write it, like we just talked about, 33,115 is equal to 27 times 1,226 plus 13. Now, so this process, when we bring it to algebra, you're going to see these same steps written at least on the next slide. X plus 5. And we're going to divide that into, you know, one thing I, I look at, why you might not have to have a zero for it, if there's any skipped powers, a lot of times you do want to put a zero in there. But this goes x cubed, x squared, x to the first, and then nothing. So this one did not skip powers. Now, when we say first, look at the front ends. You don't need to look at all of this at once. You need to just look at this x cubed divided by x. And x cubed, I'm going to write kind of my scratch work over here to the side. x cubed divided by x is x squared. So that's what I want to put on the top up here. x squared. Then, now that I've written it above, I want to take that x squared and multiply it to the entire divisor. So what I have to do next is x squared times x plus 5, but I'm going to write the results of it underneath here just like we would before. So if I distributed that, that would give me x cubed plus 5x squared. So now my next step is draw the line, change the sign. So I'm going to draw the line, and this is why I say change the sign, because you actually have to change more than one so this one becomes a minus, and this one also will, but it's not necessarily always. You've just got to change it from whatever it was. So now when we bring things down, those cancel out. And they should every time. If they don't, you've made a mistake already because you didn't divide it in there correctly. But then when we combine these, that's a negative 1x squared minus 5 more x squared. So that's negative 6x squared. Now, minus 17x minus 15. I've got to repeat this process. You will repeat the process until you don't have an x, because it's got to be something that has a smaller power than what you're dividing by. So one more time, now I'm looking at this first term, negative 6x squared. And you're thinking, well, what is negative 6x squared divided by x? And that gives me negative 6x. That's what I need to put on the top. So minus 6x. And now you only take this part we just wrote on the top. So don't take the entire thing. But negative 6x that you just wrote on the top needs to get multiplied times that entire divisor. So that's where I'm going to do that distribution there. And I will have negative 6x squared minus 30x. Draw the line, change the signs. But notice now they both become positive. You've just got to change it from whatever they are. Now this one cancels out. And this one gives me 13x. And I've got minus 15. So repeat this process. I've got 13x that I'm looking at that I need to divide by the x. I'm just looking at that front end. So 13x divided by x is 13. Write that on the top. But it is positive, so we're going to put a plus 13. And now I will take that positive 13 times x plus 5. Distribute that, and you get 13x plus 65. I need to draw the line, change the signs. So 13x cancels out, and this ends up being negative 80. So that's my remainder.
Okay. This is just like your instructions will actually read. That's come on, I kept saying, I just don't want your instructions to throw you off because there's so many something of X. And each of the following, a polynomial P of X and a divisor D of X are given. Use long division to find the quotient Q of X and the remainder R of X when P of X is divided by D of X and express P of X in the form D of X times Q of X plus R of X. So this is one of those cases where I just think the instructions can just sound a little bit overwhelming, but it's really the same thing we were just doing. First terms. So I looked at x cubed divided by x. I got x squared. Now I take this and distribute it to both of them. So that gives me x cubed minus 5x squared. Draw the line, change the signs, those cancel 4x squared when I bring that down negative 4x squared. But I also need to bring down my next terms. Front ends, negative 4x squared divided by x, it's negative 4x. Now I need to take negative 4x times both parts that divisor, so I'm distributing, so that gives me negative 4x squared plus 20x. Draw the line, change the signs, those cancel, negative 4x plus 25. Okay, divide by front ends, negative 4x divided by x negative 4. Negative 4 gets distributed and I'll end up with negative 4x plus 20. Draw the line, change the signs, and that gives me a 5 down here. Okay, same kind of work, but now we're working on this next problem. But I would point out this one has skipped some powers. Notice it has an x to the fourth, but it doesn't have an x cubed in it. It also doesn't have an x to the first. So I'm going to put a zero in for those. Occasionally, you could run across one where you don't need it, but a lot of times you will. x plus 2. Let me just see if I can go ahead and write this other one. x to the fourth plus 0x cubed minus 2x squared plus 0x plus 3. So I've kind of put those powers really back in with a coefficient of 0 so I have a space holder so I can line up my stuff correctly. So now looking at first terms, x to the fourth divided by x, distribute it, plus 2x cubed. Draw the line, change the signs, those cancel, and now I have negative 2x cubed. So see, I would not have really had a place to put that if I hadn't shoved things over to make room for my missing powers. First terms, negative 2x cubed divided by x is negative. 2x squared, so now I need to take negative 2x squared and distribute it. Negative 2x cubed minus 4x squared. Draw the line, change the signs. So I have 2x squared plus 0x plus 3. First terms, 2x squared divided by x is plus 2x. Two 2x two distributed will give me 2x squared plus 4x. Draw a line, change the signs, bring down negative 4x plus 3. Divide by first terms negative 4. Okay, now I have clearly run out of room, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that over there. I'm not changing anything. I'm just trying to give myself more room. So now if I take this negative 4 and distribute it that, I get negative 4x 
minus 8. Draw the line, change the signs, and I have 11. So now for that answer, when they want it in that strange form, we can take P of X minus 2X fourth minus 2X squared plus 3. So I wrote it down in their original form is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Okay, so that's that form of that answer that they want. But now, if there is no remainder, in grade school we would say, oh, it divides in there evenly. And you will say this term that it divides evenly, even though the numbers don't have to be even. So we can take some odd numbers and we can divide them and we can say, oh, there's, it goes in there evenly. What that really means is it's a factor. And if it's a factor, the remainder will be zero. And if the remainder is zero, then we also get from the remainder theorem, then we could plug in the number and it would make it equal zero. So if you can plug in a number and it equals zero, then X minus that number is a factor. Now that can be a little bit confusing, but we're just going to know that if we can plug a 5 in and make it equal 0, then x minus 5 is a factor. Well, if it's a factor, then the remainder is 0. So it's like I could kind of put all three of those together, even though they're actually two separate theorems. So if x minus c is a factor of that, then I could also say f of x which in that case, that's what they got here, divided by x minus c has a remainder equal to zero. Now this actually comes with the remainder theorem, but the remainder theorem is kind of connected to this part. This one's connected to both. So all three of those things will happen at once. Why do we care? Because sometimes you just want to know if the remainder is zero before you bother to do the division. Use long division to determine whether the following is a factor. So we just need to do our division and see if we end up with a remainder of zero. So I'm going to do this one cranked all the way out just like they want me to. And then I'm going to show you a shortcut. So please stay tuned. So here the remainder was not zero, so x plus five is not a factor. Is this a factor then? No. But I did all that work just to find out that the remainder was not zero. So what I'm gonna point out to you though, based on this previous slide, is that if instead of thinking about x minus 5, if I had just plugged in a 5, I could see what it equals. So watch this. Now again, I'm not doing b and c just yet. What I'm just going to point out is that if you take this one, that means x minus negative 5. x plus 5 is the same thing as x minus negative 5. So if I took negative 5 and plugged it in right there, I could just see what it equals. So let me bring up my calculator and just show you what I mean by that. I could take negative 5 and store it into x. Type this, because it's already remembering that negative 5 is my x. So I have x raised to the third minus x squared minus 17x minus 15. And see this negative 80? That's the remainder I had here. And it's all, if this is what I really want to know to determine if it's a divisor, it's a lot faster just to plug in a number and get there. 
So I realize that the homework will read exactly like this, but I'm trying to tell you there's a better way than long division. If you just want to know it's a factor, then you just need to know what the remainder is. And you can get the remainder by plugging in what would be the zero of this. So really, this is the same as x minus a negative 1. So instead of doing all the long division, we can simply find out what do we get when we plug in a negative 1 up there. And that is going to tell me what my remainder is. Using my calculator, then, I can even do it faster here because now I can just take negative 1 and store it into x. And then rather than retype this, I can just back up and hit enter and it will copy and paste it. But now that I have told it to store negative 1 is to x, when I hit enter, I find out that that equals 0. So since this one equals 0, then yes, this one is a factor. Again, if I want to check this one, x plus 3 is the same as x minus negative 3. And I keep showing it like this because that's how it relates to this, x minus c. And then you take whatever c was and plug it in. So if I want to do this one, I need to plug in a negative 3. Okay, So I'm just trying to find out what is h of negative 3. Does it equal 0? I could do it with long division, but why would we want to, right? So I'm going to take negative 3, store x, enter, and then again, I'm just backing up so that I can copy and paste. And this one equals 0. So since this one equals 0, then I know I have another yes. Long division is necessary sometimes, but we certainly don't want to use it unless we have to because it is a real messy, long pain. Now, is there a faster way to divide? Yes, sometimes. If the divisor is linear, okay, so what does linear mean? You might recall that we had some, if, you're, if your highest power is a 1, so like the equation of a line, if your divisor could be like mx plus b form, linear, then you can use what we call synthetic division. And this looks like a crazy chart, but it is much faster. Now, this is the same problem we've worked before. I simply want to show it to you in this other form. So what you do is you look at your divisor. What would make this equal zero? That's why it says linear divisors zero value. So this would equal zero if x were negative five. So I'm going to put a negative five and put a little box there. Then put coefficients of the dividend. So here, that's these numbers in front. So I have one x cubed, negative one x squared, negative 17x, and negative 15. Now purposefully leave yourself some space here, okay? You're going to have to go back and write numbers in there. Now let's look at what these arrows do. This orange arrow, every single time we've got an orange arrow headed down. And over here on the left, it tells me an orange arrow headed down means I need to add. Then I have these angle, the blue arrows. Whenever I go up on the angle, I will multiply by the box zero, whatever number. So in my case here, I'm going to be multiplying by negative five. And that's what's going to move me over. So going down, one plus nothing is one. As I go up, I need to multiply by this number. So one times negative five. Then I need to add. Then I need to multiply by that number, so that gives me positive 30. Then add, multiply, add, and the very last number you write down is the remainder. So once again, you see negative 80 is the remainder. I worked this same problem out 
here, and I had negative 80 as the remainder. I also worked this problem out here, and I had negative 80 as the remainder. These numbers, instead of being coefficients of the dividend, you end up with coefficients of the quotient, but they are one power down. So I'm going to just change my pen color here and write that. Because this one was originally an x cubed, we're going to go down one power, and this will be an x squared minus 6x, and there is the plus 13. So x squared minus 6x plus 13, and look, that's the exact same quotient we had up here. So wow, you can see compared to this writing, this is much nicer. So let's practice a couple of those. First of all, this is just the first power. This is a linear divisor. So you put the zero of the linear divisor. So what makes this equal zero? Negative three. Then I've got to line this up, but I do want to put zeros for any skip powers. So I have 2x to the fourth, 7x cubed, 0x squared, 1x, and minus 12. Add going down, multiply times negative 3 as I come back up. So 2 plus nothing is 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Add, I got 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Add is negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Add is 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. And add is negative 42, and that's the remainder. So that quotient, again, will be one power less. This started as an x to the fourth. So this is 2x cubed plus 1x squared minus 3x plus 10. And then my remainder was negative 42. The zero of this one is a positive 2, so that's what I'm going to multiply by every time I'm coming back up on the angle. 1x cubed, 7x squared, 13x to the first, and a 3. So now 1 times 2 is 2. We add 9. 9 times 2, 18. And we add 31 times 2 is 62, and add is 65. That's the remainder. The quotient has been reduced by one power, so this was x cubed. So now I have 1x squared plus 9x plus 31 with remainder of 65. Much, much more efficient than long division. Now this says using synthetic division, determine whether the numbers are zeros. Synthetic division is what we were just doing, so we want to write that out like synthetic division, and then if it is a zero, we will get a zero for a remainder. This did not say x minus something. This is just saying, is this a zero? If this is a zero, this is what I actually need. I could take 1 minus the square root of 2, and I can store it into x. And I have this ugly little thing here. Then I can type in my x to the fourth minus 16. And I got this. This was not zero. This was not zero. So this was not a zero of the polynomial. The answer was no. But what about if you have i's and negative two i's? Some of your models or your calculators will still let you do that, provided you go to mode and change this into a plus bi mode. So see that a plus bi? And then I'm going to quit that, and now I'm going to take i, which is the second function of this little decimal here. I'm going to take i, 
and store it as x. And then again, do my x to the fourth minus 16. And I get negative 15. That does not equal zero. So i is not one. What about negative two i? Store it into x. And then let's again check our value here. Now this one did work, zero plus zero i. So isn't that store feature great? And it's really a lot easier to understand all the way around. So did this one work? Um, no. Did this one work? No. But this one did work. So if we know the factor, we know the remainder is zero. If the remainder is not zero, it's not a factor. But our remainder theorem also does, does something else for us. I think we've done this enough. So like determine if this is a factor, we can actually just plug it in and see if it's gonna work. So we're gonna bring back up the calculator and I'm gonna hit clear. Again, to do this on your calculator, you think, okay, what is the zero of this negative two? So I need to take negative two and store it into X. Negative two, store X, enter. Then I'm gonna type that in, two X squared plus two X minus three. Before I hit enter, I'm going to make sure I typed it right. Ah, oh, it should have been plus 2x. See? Good for me checking. Yay. Okay. So 2x squared plus 2x minus 3. Enter. And I get 1. So what I plugged in, what that is showing you here is what I just did is I plugged in f of negative 2. and I got one. This is that remainder theorem. Again, it's all connected. You can use synthetic division to find the functional values, and then you can check your work. Synthetic division gives us the same answer that this does. So again, just showing you, I plugged it in and got that, but I could have taken negative two, And then taking my coefficients, 2, 2, negative 3, done my long, I mean synthetic division, 2 times negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2. And the remainder you get doing your synthetic division is the same answer you get when you plug it in. So if you need to know what the remainder is, the fastest thing is to plug it in. So on this one, we can just plug in 1, negative 2, and 3. Since I have three different numbers to plug in to the same problem, that one's actually more efficient for me to use y equals and type it in there. Now I can go to my table of values and I can type in numbers. I know there's a big list there, but I can just type over them. And so let me, I need to move this and see what it wanted me to plug in. One, negative two, and three. One, negative two, and three. So that equaled zero, negative 60, and zero. This one was zero. This one was negative 60. And this one was zero. Okay, that's what those functional values are. And that was a lot faster than doing synthetic division. If I had done synthetic division, these net values would correspond to the remainder. So I guess one of the big things I want to tell you is don't feel obligated that you have to use their exact instructions on this section. A lot of times plugging in a number will let you know a lot of things. If you plug in a number and you get a zero, then x minus that number is a factor of it, and uh, the remainder would be zero.
when you actually do it that way. I hope this is helpful. If you get stuck, uh, let me know. Just send me a question.